Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for God's word? Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Nehemiah chapter number two. Let us read together if you would please. I've got feedback. Gentlemen, please. I'm not sure whether it's on the stage or whether it's front of house, but I've got feedback. Help me out, uh, Opa. Jeremiah chapter number two. I'm reading from verse number 20. And when Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant of Ammonite, and Gershom, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven will prosper us. Therefore, we servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem the city of the king. Then I want you to turn to Nehemiah chapter number four, please, if you would. And it came to pass that when Sambalat heard we built the wall, he was angry and took great indignation and mocked God's people. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews, what do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said, even that which they built, if a fox go up, he shall even break down the stone wall. I want to speak to you briefly on the subject, how to deal with critical people and criticism. How to deal with critical people and criticism. My brothers and sisters, week after week now, I have been talking to you about the power of God's vision, God's purpose, and God's design for your life. Everybody that is here within the reach of the sound of my voice have been sent by God to the people's planet in order for you to fulfill the purpose and the design for which you were born. You are here gifted. You are here talented. You are here endowed with gifts and talents and abilities that God has placed on the inside of you in order for you to fulfill the purpose and the design of your life, the purpose for which you were born. I spoke to you week after week and I told you about all the disciplines that are necessary for you to not only have a vision, but to fulfill your vision. Last week, I spoke to you about the ethic and the discipline of hard work. We discovered an amazing fact about God. In the book of Genesis, we discovered that God, when he started out right at the onset and the beginning of all things, the Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As we study the passage of scripture, we discovered the first thing that God does when he introduces himself. He does not introduce himself as Jehovah Shammah. 
He does not introduce himself as Jehovah Rohi. He does not introduce himself as Jehovah Mikadeshkem. He does not introduce himself as Jehovah Jireh. In fact, when God introduces himself right at the beginning and the onset of the canon of the text, he introduces himself as a working God. We discover that God worked for six days and he only rested for one. We also said there are many people that rest for six days and try to work one day. You will never be able to fulfill the design and the purpose of God unless you embrace the discipline and the ethic of hard work. Everybody that's going to do something great for God, something powerful, something stupid something that's worth celebrating you've got to roll up your sleeves you've got to make up your mind that you will embrace the ethic and the discipline of hard work it starts with the little child in kindergarten that child has to make up their mind that they will embrace the discipline of hard work you go to primary school and the teachers will pull you and push you toward the discipline and the ethic of hard work. As soon as you're done with primary school, you go to secondary school. In secondary school, they try and teach you to become an independent thinker. When you are in primary school, you are nurtured, you are guided by the wise counsel and the guidance of the teacher. But when you get to primary school, the teacher sort of step back and prepare you for the next level where you're supposed to go. And they try and help to get you to a place where you embrace the disciplines of hard work. When you are finished with a, a secondary school and you go to varsity or you go to a technical or you go to a college, there the involvement of the lecturer is even less. Why? Because by this time you have to have learned the dynamic and the principle of working on your own. You've got to go and research on your own. You've got to go and look at assignments and put them together on your own. As you go further, you have discover as you begin to do your qualifications, whether it's your BA degree, your BTH, whether it's your master, whether it's your doctrine, the further you go, the less involved the lecturer or the instructor become. You get a professor that is assigned to you and all the professors will do. They will meet with you occasionally and give you guidance and give you assignment and help you to focus on the, 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 the thesis or the paper that you are going to do. And as you study, you've got to embrace over and over and over the discipline and the ethic of hard work. We were blessed last week when one of the writers says, when it comes to work, the character of people are revealed. Some people roll up their sleeves, turn up their sleeves. Some people turn up their noses. And some people doesn't turn up at all. Lazy people doesn't get anywhere in life. Lazy people are unfruitful, they are unproductive, they never excel, they never attain, they never achieve, they never become all that God intended for them to become. Why? Because laziness will destroy your purpose. I want to take it further today and I want to talk to you about Brother Pastor, what do I do now that I have a vision? What do I do now that I have rolled out the vision? I have set the cause. I'm about to chart the cause. I embrace the disciplines of hard work and so on. What do I do as I pursue the vision and the goal? What do 
I do with those cynical, critical critics? How do I handle and respond to the people that criticize me? Tell your neighbor, prepare yourselves for criticism. Theodore Roosevelt said, It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the do of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by the dust and the sweat and the blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, and come short again and again and again because there is not an effort without error and shortcomings. But he who does actually strive to do the deed, he who knows the great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who depends, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who is, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails daring greatly. So that his place shall never be with those that are cold and timid souls who knows neither the voice and the sweetness of victory nor defeat. It's easy to criticize the boxer in the ring if you are sitting in the pew. Eleanor Roosevelt says, do what you feel in your heart to be right. You'll be criticized anyway. Another writer says, those who can do those who can't criticize. Another writer says, if you believe in what you are doing, then let nothing hold you up in your work. Much of the best work in the world has been done against all seemingly impossibilities. The thing is, get the work done. End of quote. Another writer says, a critic is someone who never actually goes to battle, yet afterwards come out shooting the wounded. I wish I had time to break this down. Lastly, Samuel Johnson says, Criticism is a study by which men grow important and formidable at a very small expense because critics does not pay the price. They don't actually get involved. They don't actually roll up their sleeves. They don't actually fight the fight. They don't actually play the game. They don't actually pursue. They don't actually sweat. They don't actually have blood uh, 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 oozing out of their wounds. So all they do is at a very small and minimum expense. They grow and they become formidable. They become important. Now listen to the curse of the saints. He whom nature made weak and idleness keeps ignorant may yet support his vanity by the name of being a critic. Lights on. Criticism. My brothers and sisters, as you journey towards your vision, now that you set your vision, you know that you, you want to make a success of your life. You know that you want to be fruitful, you want to be productive, you want to be successful. You want to attain. You want to excel in life. You don't want to live a mediocre life, you want to live an extraordinary life. 